welcome to TA Outdoors. I'm back here at my bushcraft camp in the winter and I brought my old man along. Must be mad, mustn't I? Yeah, we're back here, we've got the fire going. Um, we've made a few additions to the camp. Well, actually, my dad's made a few additions to the camp. Uh, really, really very, very simple to make and actually very comfortable. These chairs that we're sat on here. I'm just going to grab the camera and, and dad's going to do a little chat to you about how he's made these chairs because they are really, really simple and effective. Basic, but effective. Yep. Well, the last time I came to Mike's campsite here, I enjoyed it, but I did not enjoy sitting down with my knees around my ears. I mean, I'm not a lady of the night or anything. I don't want that position. I wanted to be comfortable. So, I was sitting one night at home thinking, how can I make that more comfortable? Obviously, a couple of big tree stumps here, cut them off, and I thought, well, they might fall over, they might wobble over. And I came up with the idea, if I drive two stakes in either side, not only does that help pinch this together so it doesn't move, but I got some old fishing rope. A couple of nights ago, I was beach fishing, doing a beach fishing film for our, uh, our fishing show and I found a big old boy, it was buried in the shingle. On the end was a piece of rope, well I had to have it, it was free. So I untangled all the rope, brought it back here, an ideal situation for Mike, just lattice it up the back, and these make a couple of nice chairs for sitting on, for old boys like me to lean back in, and then I can, I can stretch my, my legs out, and do you know what happens next? I'll catch my feet on fire. Well, I have to admit, Dad, these are really, really comfortable. <laughs> and I love the fact that they're very simple to make. They are really easy, aren't they? I mean, that took you, what, 10 minutes, if that? About 10 minutes, I guess, that's all it was, yeah. Yeah, really good. So what we're going to do is have a cook-up. Yep. Usually when I come here with Dad, we cook some sort of uh, bit of food. And this time, Dad, you've lowered that grill a bit, haven't you? I have indeed. I've taken off basically two inches. I think they're two inch squares. And I figure that's going to be better. Obviously, let it go down to the embers rather than burn on the smoke and the flame. And we're just going to have, what are we going to have? We're going to cook up some soup uh, just in my billy can. Just going to put that properly. I usually use the crane, the cooking crane, to, uh, with a pot hook, pot hanger to cook the, boil the water. But I think this time we just do everything on the grill and we're going to pop some bread on there and get some toast going as well. It's a real short session, isn't it? Really? It is this one, yeah, because tomorrow, guys, horrendous <laughs> rain. Yeah. Two days of rain. I've already been thinking, again, I must yeah. stop this thinking because it can be painful at my age. How can I, f I want some sort of, if yeah, it was mine, a roof. a roof with some pulleys. So I've already got an idea, we're not going to get it up in time for the rain tomorrow. No. <laughs> but we've just got a thought, a, a few thoughts about placement, poles, and I've got a couple of pulleys and they've been sticking in my uh, in my brain, these pulleys, how I can work them. So it's removable. Yes. You know, don't yeah, wear up you all don't, the time. Uh, it will wear away after a while, wouldn't it? If you had a roof up all the time, the winds would come, wind, wind traditional would get it. wind in the British winter exactly. is strong. And then don't forget, you know, you're in a forest, so maybe sometimes you want the sunlight coming through to warm you up. Yeah, I mean, this has been great just uh, developing this camp, and you, we've both sort of shared ideas, haven't we? I mean, it's been, yeah. it's been, look, it's like being kids, really, isn't it? Back in the woods, we're just here to have a bit of fun, spend some time together, cook some food, and just enjoy being in the outdoors. Cook you some know, food. Get this on. Yeah, yeah, we will get it on. And we've got a theory that we're going to throw at you guys absolutely later on when we, well, just before, probably just as it's dark as we're cooking that food. But if you watch our previous videos on the bushcraft, we had some pretty crazy theories going on but the engagement from you guys was amazing amazing it? comments yes. amazing and listen guys they seem to think that theory was mine yeah. about the oil taking out the ground no 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 it was my dad's when i was younger than mike yeah. he used to take me fishing so it's mike's grandfather yeah. who came up with that idea and obviously there's something genetically wrong because i've got <laughs> i've got the same things cooking in there yeah. as my dad had that can't be right can it well it's something i've got to look forward to is it that exactly yeah. yeah yeah enjoy yeah right let's get some food on the other thing I came up with when I was uh, when I, not only sitting down low, I said to Mike, everything I put down, cups, and they all fall over because it's all ground. God didn't make ground flat, did he? It's all over. Except the place. in Norfolk. Except in Norfolk, that's flat. That's a, that's a place we have in England where it's always flat, yeah. not always windy. Anyway, what I did, I got a big quadrant from a giant piece of tree, and that's going to last years. You can hear it. I just cut the back off level, that is a table, and if you're around the woods any time, you might see maybe offcuts from lumberjacks work or something like that, and you might be able to quadrant it either with an axe or a chainsaw, make yourself some flat surfaces, you can put cups on there. You can prepare your food on it as well. You, you can prepare put, your food, absolutely. Obviously you could, you, could, you could get a food safe bit of wood on top yeah, or something, yeah. but you could, you know, chop general cutting of, of meat, I know with my steak and things, I would definitely prepare it on there. Yeah, absolutely, nice something, flat surface. Something flat for your cup of tea as well.
The other thing I hated, when I was here with Michael, although I did enjoy it very much, was ah, ah, smoke in the eyes. It's horrible, isn't it? And then I saw on one of the bushcraft a guy blowing on some tube thing, and I thought, well, hang on, I've got a piece of plastic tube. Would it work? Because it keeps your head away from the smoke. This is when you're lighting the fire to start it, and it does actually work. We started this fire, and I was in a smoke-free zone. I didn't have water pouring out my eyes, and it does indeed work. Phase two will be to narrow that tube to condense the breath going down there, but it's ideal for starting the fire. We've got the toast on guys, let the fire burn down. We've got in the billy can here, we know that's boiling for sure. It's looking nice, good. Nice and hot, so. It's got steam. Soup time for that one. I'm gonna take that one off. Put it on my new table there. Where well, we got the soup, I can put this bread back over this side a bit. What, what are we putting on the bread? We're gonna put some cheese on there, melted cheese. Melted cheese. I don't wanna spill boiling water on my lovely table. That mm. smells good already. It smells good, doesn't it? When you're in the woods, anything smells good as food. <laughs> How good was our burger the other day? Unbelievable. I feel the fish was okay as well. It was good. It's uh, given me a good excuse to go fishing again, <laughs> for sure. I wonder how much bacteria is on your hands when you, when you go mm. out in the woods. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. <laughs> Just think what the Stone Age people did. I mean, they didn't have uh, antibacterial wipes or anything like that, <laughs> did they? Baby wipes. Baby wipes, that's it. Just moss. Moss was the cleaner, I believe. Toasted cheese sandwich is looking good. Soup's looking pretty toasty. Mm. That is good. Can't Ooh. beat melted cheese. Wood smoked again, it's that smoky flavour, isn't it? We've got uh, wood smoked toast, wood smoked cheese, wood smoked tomato soup. Well, that was lovely food. That went down pretty well. Good grub. And we're going to let the fire burn down to embers. And this is traditionally when we're at camp, this is now our theory time. Think time. Think time, theory time, where we come up with some wacky idea, which generally isn't actually that wacky. It's just one of those philosophical ideas where you think, what actually is the answer to that? I think today's one is going to be to do with the primitive man again. And we were talking about it earlier. Fire's oh, gone out. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> it has gone out. But we were talking about it earlier saying, um, obviously the primitive man made fire. He learned how to use fire to then craft tools, cook, all things like that. What we wanted to know is, how did the first ever person, human, to start fire? Obviously they used sticks, they, they used friction fire, they rubbed sticks together, but how did they know that rubbing sticks together in the first place then started the fire? Exactly. Was it who, somebody must have taught them. Who would, yeah. in their right mind, let's say we, descend, we descended from primates, apes and all that, I'd have to say two things. It's okay, but how come the apes aren't flying around in jumbo 747s and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we've accelerated past them, but who taught us to rub two sticks together? When you think about it, you know, think friction. How would they know that? Possibly they would see from lightning strikes and stuff like that. But other yeah. than starting the Southern Electricity Board or something, how would a caveman know to make that first fire? Does anybody out there know? We don't know. We've just been talking unless, about it. Unless, like you say, unless they saw a lightning strike, yes. it created a fire. But no friction. Yeah, but then they kept that fire going. Well, yeah, I guess they would have kept that fire going somehow. But like you say, what happens... When the fire goes out like ours, yeah. it's just going well, out. Uh, friction fire came into it somewhere, but how did they know? It's actually Weird. really Weird. clever. They were sort of really advanced for their time, weren't they? You can see it to, uh, changing from the hand drill yeah. to, what do you call it, the, the bow, bow drill? Yeah. The, I can see that change there, yeah. that people get more advanced, the brains are getting more advanced, and they're thinking, hang on, this is really hard work. There must be an easy way of doing it. Yeah. But it's all that one where they cut a groove and they push the stick vertically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all three are friction, Friction fires, I'm going to call them. It is friction fire, yeah. How would you, who, who taught these cavemen? Let it's, us know your thoughts on that one. Yeah, comment in the uh, comment section below this video. If you look at our previous bushcraft videos, there have been loads of comments on our theories. Yeah, like, and it's actually great to scroll through the comments. We love scrolling through the comments and just seeing what your theories are. Um, because we've had some really, really good answers. And actually some, some have been really sort of thoughtful, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, also suggest some more um, tips, ideas for theory time. For the next video when we come to camp, um, I will be doing 
more bushcraft solo ones as well, so maybe nighters. I may be making a settee <laughs> um, or an armchair because I'm really impressed with it's, these oh, backrests because it's it's they do work. They are really good. Hopefully you guys have got some tips in there anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, we are not experts, guys. We really are not experts. We're just out here enjoying ourselves in the outdoors. And really, a lot of it, I, I was saying, you learn yourself. You sort of teach yourself from your mistakes, don't you, really? Yeah, well, you do. I mean, I just, I was, as I say, I was just thinking about these chairs, thinking, how can I make some form of backrest? And, and then I had the rope when I was fishing. Then I had the stakes. I thought, wow, that's yeah. springy. Yeah. And it holds the base in place as well. You guys might come up with a better way of doing it, but at the moment, I'm in heaven. It works. Thanks very much for watching guys and we will see you soon for another bushcraft video but if not check out our other fishing channel called Totally Awesome Fishing or TA Fishing where there's regular weekly uploads of fishing videos. And no smoke. <laughs>